Today I'm with Andrea Medina, one member of Team USA and one of the top amateurs in the world. How are you doing today, Andrea? And how's training going? Good, good. Um, just uh, camp is about to start uh, this weekend, so I'll be heading to the training center here in Chula Vista, and we'll be getting in some work with uh, other uh, nations. So that's that's great. First of all, I've got to congratulate you on winning back-to-back -back tournaments in Europe, in Spain and France. What was that experience like? Uh, definitely a lot of uh, just adapting to the whole COVID rules and uh, just just a lot of adaptation because we never knew what was going to happen. Rules are always changing with this COVID stuff. So um, some days we were able to train, some days we weren't able to train together. Um, a lot of COVID tests, but um, other than that, I felt completely ready to to compete, and I did what I had to do. I got the job done. How many fights did you have in both of them? I had I had two in Spain uh, and two in France. So I was supposed to have three in each, but I got a walk over. I got one walker walk over in each tournament, so I got four fights total. Now, I said this to Bruce Carrington. Uh, what's it like being a member of this Team USA? You look a very close group. Yeah, definitely. We treat each other like family. We all support each other when we compete, support each other in training. Just um, make sure everybody has high energy, high volume while we're training. And then um, we help each other out a lot. And the important question, who is the best dresser? I think it's between you and uh, Bruce Carrington. <laughs> oh man Bruce Bruce definitely beats me he has all like designer stuff so I, I don't have none of that but uh, I mean I guess yeah it would be between both of us but I only dress up when I have to <laughs> <laughs> now your father was a boxer wasn't he um, when did he become your boxing coach uh, ever since I started so I started boxing when I was five years old uh, but I started competing when I was eight. So um, ever since I was, ever since I started, he, he, he trained me and yeah, he used to be a boxer, but uh, he was supposed to go pro, but he had got into an accident. So it didn't allow him to, but yeah, ever since I started boxing, he's been my coach. So we have a, a very, very close bond. I was going to say that watching other interviews, it looks like he's been a big part of your boxing journey. How important is that support being? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's very important to me, especially because I know that that he'll take care of me. I know that he has all the right steps for me to go in this sport, and um, we're trying to make it to the top. And he's got his own boxing gym, hasn't he, in Chula Vista. And is that where your brother trains now? Well, is he doing? Yeah, that's where uh, that's where we both train. It's called Bound Boxing Academy. And uh, my brother's doing well. My brother's uh, he just turned eighteen, so he's going to be competing in the in the elite soon. And uh, he's doing very well. And talking about your dad, there, you're similar to Richard Torres Jr., where your dad is your main coach. How difficult was it being in a national team where you have national and your dad can't go with you on that journey? Right. It, didn't, it didn't stop you because you won both tournaments, but how difficult <laughs> was it? it? It actually is is difficult just because the training uh, is different um, from the way I train with my dad to the way I train with the team. Um, it's just different training. So definitely had to like get used to that. But other than that, um, it, it, it's a little it's a little hard just because I I was always used to him being there in the in the corner with me telling me what to do but um I kind of got used to it a little bit and um I, I'm a I, I can learn easy and I'm a great listener so I try to listen to what the coaches say all the time when I'm in the ring now you want to you, you're very you're still young um but you're quite an experienced boxer aren't you you've been around 
on the national team quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your favourite memories? Um, I would say just winning Junior Olympics in 2014 and 15, I think. Um, just because that's what started um, getting in my head that I could really do something uh, with this boxing stuff and really go to the Olympics. And to keep at that top level, Andrea, the discipline has to be at the top level as well. How difficult, difficult is it being to maintain that? Discipline is, uh, now I'm used to it, it's discipline and, and eating, dieting, training, all that stuff. But when I was younger, it's pretty hard because I, was, I wasn't able to hang out with my friends. I wasn't able to uh, go out a lot and hang out. So, um, I mean, as a kid, like you want to eat the pizza, you want to eat the cake at the parties, you know what I mean? Uh, but now it's not, it's not that, it's not that far. I mean, I got to do it. I got to do it. I'm, I, I'm used to it. I've been doing it for a long time now. And you do, you've obviously done most of the work yourself, but who else do you credit for helping you get to this top level? Um, just, I would just People say. People always my, panic now that they're going to miss somebody out, but I know you credit your dad a lot. No, I feel, I feel like just my parents and uh, my parents have helped me so much throughout this whole journey and they still do. And they, and they always will. Um, so yeah, especially my dad, cause he's my coach. So that's, always going to be there but uh my mom too definitely a lot of support from both of them it's a real boxing family yours isn't it with you <laughs> as well um, yeah now female boxing in the uk is booming and I, I think it's growing in america and all around the world which boxers do you look up to uh i would say michaela meyer look up to her a lot just because um, she's she's doing what i want to do she went to olympics and now it's pro going up in the ranks now, um, won a world title recently. So uh, that's what I want to do. So I look up to her a lot. I like to watch her, her fights a lot. And are you looking forward to turning pro? Yeah, definitely, after this Olympics. That seems to be the difference now. Uh, a lot of girls, like Katie Taylor, waited till they were at the end, you know, 29 before they turned professional. Girls are turning professional at a younger age now, aren't they? I feel just because... Um, they don't really want to wait the extra four years to be training uh, to do the Olympics. Uh, but my dad always tells me anyone can turn pro, but not everyone can go to the Olympics. So I'd rather wait, wait it out. Talking about the Olympics, uh, how much are you looking forward to going? Oh, I've been waiting for this since I started competing. So I'm looking forward to it a lot and uh, I can't wait. It's just a few months away. And for young amateurs watching this, uh, I interviewed the Grandy Twins and Nino McCollum, and they're at their young age and they're aiming to be where you're at now, where you represent in USA and you've had that experience of standing on the podium, winning and hearing the national anthem. What does that feel like, Andrea? I feel um, the national um, and the podium is very nerve. It's more nerve wracking on the podium than it is in the ring I don't know why but uh, I mean it feels great to be in that number one spot and to be on the number one uh, spot podium each time in Spain and in France so that that was a great experience uh, those are my first two gold medals uh, international gold medal um, so that was great and I was very very proud of myself so you remind me of Bruce Carrington a little bit where it, on your <laughs> Instagram photographs you clearly loved the sport well, it's the toughest of all sports. What is it about this sport that you love? I just love that it's an individual sport. Nobody can help me inside the ring. Um, I'm not a good team player. So, <laughs> so um, I mean, it's all up to me in there. I, I make the mistakes. I I got to correct them. I mean, of course, my coach is telling me um, what to do, but uh, it's all up to me in there. And I love that about it. And what advice would you give on how to deal with setbacks? Just uh, stay consistent. Just stay consistent and believe in yourself. Um, keep working hard and you'll get to where you want to be. Well, Andrea, thank you very much for that. Good luck with the Olympics. Uh, I'm going to go through the qualifiers, but uh, good luck in Tokyo next year. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.